Watch this. That just shot three darts. It is, it's perfect. It is perfect. It is everything I ever wanted out of it. It is everything I had hoped and dreamed that it would be. I have no comments. This, and I'm very happy to say, is the Zombie Strike Sledge Fire. Is this the greatest blaster ever made? I don't know. We'll figure that out later. But first... We got to cue the intro, and then we got to start out with the design. <laughs> so quick disclaimer, it's going to be very hard for me to be objective about this, but I'm going to do everything in my power to be completely objective about this. This is the Zombie Strike Sledgefire. If you don't know what this is, this was the first release Zombie Strike Blaster alongside the Hammer Shot, and quite possibly one of, if not the absolute best Zombie Strike Blaster ever released, ever, throughout Zombie Strike's entire runtime, for a variety of reasons, which I will get into throughout the course of this video. But yeah, it's pretty hard to find these nowadays, especially online, if you can find these with the shells, which I happen to do. They usually command hefty prices. I got this one for $50, which was $20 more than retail price. And today I'm going to explain why this thing was worth every single penny. So with that said, let's get started with the design. So first of all, if you're a cowboy, you're gonna be madly in love with this. Or if you just like shotguns in any capacity whatsoever. This is the most shotgunny shotgun I have ever shotgunned in my shotgun ever. Look at it, look at it. It's got everything. The big chunky barrel, the stock connected to the grip, the, the kind of short but sturdy looking stock, the angled trigger, the hammer action on the top, just everything. It looks like a shotgun and it looks so, so good. I can't get over how good the sledge fire looks. Even on this side, look at this. There aren't very many details that were missed out on the other side, including the Nerf logo being painted in. This is one of those rare situations where Nerf painted both sides as much as they reasonably could. They could not paint the Zombie Strike logo on the other side because they put the warning labels here for some reason. I feel like they could have put the warning labels down here, but it doesn't really matter. They did paint the Zombie Strike logo on one side. As for the text that says Sledgefire, well, that was actually just painted orange on both sides, and I painted it in silver with a Sharpie marker. Shame me all you want. I like using Sharpie markers. They're so much easier than trying to put up with paints. But seriously though, I really, really love this design. And that might just be because I'm a shotgun nerd and I love shotguns way too much, but it is so good. It is so, so cool to look at this thing. Let's get on to the ergonomics though. It's got a main grip and it's got a stock. The foregrip, of course, it's one of those ones where the foregrip is non-existent, but you can put the, your hand like right here or right here. I ended up putting it right here most of the time, but it doesn't really matter. Going on to the main grip. Oh, it is so, so good. It's right up there next to the Maverick on my list of good grips. This is quite possibly one of the best grips I've ever used on a Nerf blaster. Not just a Nerf shotgun, but any blaster at all. This grip is amazing. It is a tiny little bit small, but because it's angled forward, you don't really notice how small the grip actually is, and it's very easy to get used to. It is round and smooth and filleted from all angles, and it's a big grip. It's a long grip, so no matter how big your hands are, it will most likely fit on this thing very comfortably. As for the stock, oh my gosh, it's so good. It's a little bit short. I would prefer the stock to be a little bit longer, but for what it's worth, I think the stock is great. Also, the stock is a separate piece. 
So you can literally remove it and put a bigger stock on there if you really wanted to, but that's something I'll address more in my opinion. And again, there's no foregrip, but you can put your hand right here or right up here. I end up putting it right here, which is pretty comfortable, though a little bit cramped. If you don't like it there, you can put it up towards the front, and that works just fine. It kind of has these ridges here, which guide your fingers into place, so that I think is a little bit more optimized to be a foregrip, but still, I don't mind either way. I think either way works just fine. It doesn't really matter. This blaster is super comfortable. All right, all right, let's finally get onto the function. So first of all, this is a sledge fire shell. It holds three nerf darts, which are actually flush in the shell, which means that you can stick this in a backpack or in a dump pouch or in your pocket or wherever, and the darts won't get bent or damaged at all, which is great. And the blaster has a storage for them in the stock. If you place them sticking right side up, it holds them rather securely. But if you put them in upside down, they sink a little bit further in. When you flip it over, they just fall right out. So it's kind of a, a do or don't sort of situation, but it doesn't really matter. Watch this, watch this. Here's how you prime the blaster. So here you go. You, you, oh, you pull this down. There's a very light spring here on this hammer prime. You pull the barrel down. You take the shell. You load it into the front of the barrel, not the back like most other break action nerf blasters. You close it. And if you've noticed, there's no T-pull or pump action or anything because the blaster's already primed because the action of breaking the barrel open primed the blaster. And then when you break it open again, it ejects the shell out so that you can take it and put it back in the stock and then put another one in and do the same thing. Hear me out. This is a blaster that has a functional break action mechanism. So when you break it open, it primes the blaster. You take a shell, you put it in the front, you close it, and you fire one shot that shoots all three darts at once before opening it again and ejecting the shell out automatically to reload the next dart. Is that the best mechanism ever seen in any Nerf Blaster ever? Probably. It probably is. And now I want to talk about how smooth it is to do that. So, pulling this thing down, it's pretty smooth. The, the hammer like spring thing in there is a little bit heavy, but you kind of just got to nudge that. Pulling this down, smooth like butter. And when you close it, it is very nice. It just like kind of ratchets up a little bit and then nice satisfying click into place. Once it's closed, you can still open it again. So you can deal with that. And then the trigger pull, it's got a tiny little bit of draw and then good click. It pops and it kind of kicks a little bit because the plunger tube is enormous. That's the plunger tube. This whole big circle thing in there is the plunger tube. And it feels like it's got just as much power as it actually does in there. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. Ugh. Firing demo. Please. I should have a cowboy hat here. Got something you'd like to say to me? So call me biased, which I am, but call me honest because I, I don't know what to say. It's so good. It's so good. I've been trying to get one of these things for five years. After this thing stole my thunder at Toys R Us and took my eyes away from it. My eyes were taken away from this. To the brain saw. Mm. And now that I finally have this thing in my hands, it was worth every second that I spent trying to find it. This is the best shotgun I have ever used. Not just that, but it is quite possibly one of the best blasters I have ever seen in my life. The only downside that this blaster has, has nothing to do with the blaster itself. It is the function of using shells. Shells are just as proprietary as you think they are. Trying to find these things is pretty hard. 
Luckily though, there are 3D printed shells that you can get, there are people who resell these shells online, and even then there are STL files, so if you have a 3D printer like me, you can 3D print your own shells back at home and just make an entire array of shells for your arsenal to use in the sledge fire. In that case, if you had a ridiculous amount of these shells, just like in a dump pouch or something, that you could use this as a primary and just take shells out and do it one shot at a time, you've already won the war. You've already won the nerf war. You have a three dart shell fed shotgun beast. Gosh, it's so good. The performance is kind of mid, but that can be fixed by taking the air restrictors out and giving it a spring upgrade and taking out dart posts and stuff like that. Stuff that modders have been doing for years already. But just, oh my gosh, I don't know where else to say about this review. The sledge fire is absolutely phenomenal. And it really drives me nuts that they still have not brought it back. Hasbro, bring this one back. Bring this one back specifically. This is good. This is good, right here. Good, this is a good one. Bring this one back, this is good. Don't bring back anything else until you bring the sledge fire back. Wait, I'm just wondering, this is a good one. This is, this is the good one. Bring this one back. It's good. And if you find anything, like any of these out in the wild, even if they don't have the shells, just buy it. Just buy the blaster. Just get the blaster. Worry about the shells later. Already, just doing this is fun. And, and just dry firing. Like, just doing this is fun. It is so cool, and it's so easy to get fast at doing that just because... Ugh! Mwah. Thank you for watching. I've been reunited with my baby. I'll see you next time. Bye.